she stopped believing there was a dom out there for her that could match her mind and her kinks. Asia McKinney thought she had everything figured out. Her dance school, Mrs. Brown's Dance Studio, was the best in her community. She had the support of her friends and family. And at night, she indulged in her other passions. But when her studio starts losing students and she has to turn to her sex work to keep the lights on, her life takes a turn for the unexpected. He accepted this was all life had to give. Knox Davenport had an orderly life. Work is expounding, his seven-year-old daughter is flourishing, and after a difficult divorce, he started to explore his kink through dominant classes with an experienced submissive. But there's only one obstacle to his peace of mind. His daughter's ballet teacher. Why does Asia McKinney, the owner of Brown Dance Studio and her half-baked holiday dance show, threaten to unravel all of his composure? When Asia and Knox's goals converge, will they let their past dictate their futures? Or will they both bend to the needs of their heart? Hello, my beautiful people, and welcome back to the Bibliophile's Bookcase. I am your host, Erica the Bibliophile. And baby, this book was a doozy. Today, we are talking about I want to say it's ply. I, listen, I, I don't know the fancy words now, but I believe it's just, pl- I call it ply. Uh, Wicked Moves Book 1. So child, there's a part 2 coming. And I can't wait to read it, but let's get into this. Um, Well, and as we know, I do not discuss sex scenes on my show. It's like, but it's a lot of them. And they're good, so... If you're like sewed off smut alone, perfect book for you. But let's get to the plot, hunty. So we have Miss Asia McKinney who is running a dance studio. Um, and you know, at first it was business was booming. She had a lot of girls coming through a kids, I should say kids coming through to dance, and then all of a sudden the kids are basically dropping like flies, baby, like My parents said that your class costs too much and we can't do it. And even one girl came to her, like, baby was boo-hoo crying because she didn't, first of all, she loves Asia's class, you know, like dancing for her. So when she got to come and say, I can't do this no more, it's too expensive, like, and the baby was like, I don't want to go nowhere else. Like, you know, I want to stay here with you. And of course, like Asia want all her kids with her, but it just wasn't that way. So when it started affect her bottom start affecting, excuse me, her bottom line, she has to go back to this BDSM club that she was going to with her former boyfriend, like in her last relationship. And um also, she makes money off of it. So she will be training with a quote-unquote new or inexperienced dom to help him basically when he wants to find his sub. So she gets paid for this and, you know, they play and she'll give him critique as it's going on. Like, you know, with subs in the future or with your sub specifically, you know, you might want to do this. You might want to do that. Look for this cue. And all that type of stuff. But as they're doing it, as far as like interacting in the scenes, she notices some similarities between the Dom, because they wear ma- uh, they wear masks to hide their identity. And when they first meet each other, she tells them like, you know, this is just for this. Let's not get too personal. I might tell you some things that I like, but that's just me. Not all subs are the same. So like I said, take cues, notice what they like and what they don't like and all that type of stuff. But she also notices that he is very similar to one of the dads of one of the daughters in her class. And this man rides her back. Like she can't get away with nothing. He got a problem with everything. And on his end, it's basically because he's low-key attracted to her, but he's not going to 
move on that, but it's just like, what are we in kindergarten where you can't say, hey, I like you? It's just like, he has to find a way to critique everything she does. He has a problem with everything. And when I say that shit was annoying, and uh, first of all, it just didn't make no sense. It's just like, because everybody was always looking at him like, really? What you got a problem with now? Like, what what's the issue? But he don't care. It just, it helps alleviate, my thought anyway, like it alleviated some stress in his life. Like I get to pick on this other person, even if he didn't see it that way. But that's definitely what it was like. Like I get to pick on this other person. And he also put it off as caring for his daughter. And his daughter loved um, Aisha. Is that what I called her? Aisha? I believe that's her name. Um, and so, but then he notices too, like, like I said, I don't discuss the scenes, but it's, it, it's a lot in there, but it's so good. Um, so outside, okay. Outside of the club. Well, no, he starts to notice as well. Like I notice it's her. Cause basically it's like, she can't hide her body. Her body looked the same. And it's just like, he notices the same thing, but he tries to bring that outside of the club. And at first she wasn't with it. She's like, I know who you are. Oh no, this, sorry. This is when they, they were in the club, but it was like one of their last scenes together where he basically forces her to acknowledge the fact that they are who they are. And she was like, um no because he asks like when did you know and she tells him like when she knew and he's and she asks him like when did he know and basically like their second time together he knew that she was who she was and because she went through what she went through with her past relationship she wasn't trying to get close to anybody so he's trying to move forward with their quote-unquote relationship and she's like why couldn't you just leave it alone and let it be what it is and so even though they're still supposed to be doing his training she goes back to like the head dom and tells him like i can't do this anymore and of course he's looking out for her safety like do i need to kick him out like did something and she's like no no she has to tell him like no i just won't be continuing his training anymore please find somebody else and of course that messed up his head because he really thought like this was moving on to something else. And it's like, what you want and what she want is two different things. And he also just got out of a divorce. So he's trying to move on from that as well while acknowledging his feelings for her. And it's just like, really both of y'all got too much going on, but they trying to make it work anyway. And she was, I think she was, um, piling too much onto her plate anyway because while she was steady losing dancers and trying to figure out what she was gonna get the money from and like what she was gonna do then she added another like dance recital but this included the dads um in this dance and so but it was just like baby you got too much going on and basically you could tell she was running she was running from what was going on in her life but of course everything comes out grand and great and at the what was it at the end the the that's what it was i forgot about that the the ex-wife tried to pop back in basically like she won her family so they took a break for a while while he tried to get that situation because he didn't want the ex-wife it's just like whatever that was is no longer is and he thought about going back basically to give his daughter that quote unquote family. But if y'all not good, what good is the quote unquote family front going to do? And I, I'm sorry, every time I have to say this, I just want somebody who has this ideology to explain to me how that works for y'all. And, you know, the ideology of a child needs to grow up with both parents in the household you know the parents need to stay together but it's like if y'all hate each other guts and the child to see that why should they have to grow up with that when they can grow up having a very happy childhood with you at your like mom at her house and dad at their house like but if y'all miserable together a, a kid should have to see that like make that make sense 
And I'm just like, this two-parent household thing, it's just, it all goes back to putting on a front for the world. Like, I want the world to look at me and my family and say, wow, they got it together. They're a great couple with a great kid and whatever, or however many children you got, like, whatever, whatever. It's all about how people perceive you instead of actually having a good relationship. Like, how does that make sense to y'all? So you don't really care about the kid being happy. You care about people's opinion of you. But anyway, in the end, he comes back to Aisha and they're finally making a go of their relationship. And she finds out, Aisha does, because she has like two friends supporting her throughout the whole book. You know, they got her back. They work at the studio with her but it's like an old uh what was she high school and i don't even know if she would call her a right it's like a girl she knew in high school basically came back home to steal her clients like she was cutting cutting corners and cutting down on the price for her school so they would leave aisha school just to come to her school and so when Aisha got that information, she was like, girl, I will turn your ass in so fast. And the girl basically thought she had one up on her. Let me see. I should have had this pulled up already. But let me see if I can find the exact uh, passage. So, um, I can see what it is. Because it's just like, girl, where, where the fuck did you come from? And what you hating for? Like, and... I think they were both dancers in high school. That's kind of what it was. And the old high school, because I forgot her name, but it's not even important. But she's like, you always thought you was better. And when I'm the one that actually went uh, on to do, she was like in this video, she had done this type of thing, whatever, whatever. Like basically my life is better than yours. But somehow you're back here with a dance studio like in my business like in my way like you ain't got nothing better to do with yourself and basically she didn't so it's just like what the fuck is going on but anyway in the end because i don't want to drag this out because it's it's not really like a long video because like i said it's more so in my opinion smut and i enjoyed it but um it's also a beautiful read i do want to um acknowledge that okay so here we go here we go here we go here we go so i thought i had it so if you decide okay so here we go. So her friend, one of her friends, Mila. So I'm going to read it because we going back to a uh, high school girl. So where are we at? Mila walked in and gave me a wide eyed look that had me shift in focus. What? Girl, guess what I just found out. But the chime went off again. So Mila had came into the studio and said that and then the shine went off again and a storm of blonde braids pink clothing and strong perfume hit me roxanne what was she doing at my studio i stared at mila who in turn gawked at roxanne as if she just sprouted out through the floor you bitch she spat pointing at me as if i was the source of all her ills you got that boyfriend of yours to fuck me over. I hope you're happy. All that talk about being glad for me and my future the other day at the groceries was bullshit, wasn't it? I have no clue what you're talking about. But my, I said, but my brain was one step ahead of my mouth and the picture of what had happened these last months started gaining color. You always hated Aisha during our dance classes and she never even did a thing to you. Tyler accused while hidden by the receptionist desk. She wrote on her laptop, she did it. But you decided to mess with her livelihood and now you're mad? Mila had recovered from her shock and she squared up a menacing expression directed at Roxanne. Fuck off. This does not involve you two. Oh, the poor sweet orphan always needed these two to defend her. 
your boyfriend fucked me over. He kicked me out of my establishment. Now I need to find a new place. And with all the students leaving, I had to postpone my holiday show. Which you had planned on the same day as hers, Mila said, and everything fell into place. Roxanne, why? I was nothing but kind to you back in the day. Oh, please. You were so full of yourself. I hated your fake ass self then. And I can't stand you now. But this wasn't about that. It was plain business. Your dancers are the best in the area. And I always get the best. And it's just like, girl, what the fuck? <clears throat> anyway, so, but <laughs> let's continue. But you aren't getting anything right now. My dancers are back at the studio and you got kicked out of your studio and have no show. And you know the saddest part? You helped me level up. I was able to create scholarships out of this experience and I created a new holiday show. And what do you have to show for all this? That's all right. I'm sure my cousin being all good to Knox and telling him my business will probably bring them back together. Oh, that's what it was. Roxanne was related to Knox's ex-wife and that's how all this bullshit came back up. And so... Um, she says that's what I came here to say right now because of me. Knox is reconsidering custody and rethink and Lord rethinking how his family dy dynamic should look. So it seems I still managed to fuck up your life. And she shrugged and smiled. And for that, something clicked in uh, excuse me, Aisha's head. And so Roxanne is like, you know, what? Are, why are you smiling like that? Have a good day, Roxanne. You've been nothing but the bearer of good news. Oh, and that anonymous email you sent me, we traced it to your account. The baddest dancer bitch at gmail.com, right? And I can tie it directly to you and your business through the IP you use, which matches your home. If you fuck with me and mine again, I will take this information and sue you for the blackmailing and defamation. Do you understand? And all the color drains out of her face because, girl, you're not smart. You and your cousin cooked up this scheme. And, like, what? What does that mean? Like, girl, get out of here. Cut this out. Cut this out. Cut this out. But in the end, so, yeah, basically, it was like he was thinking about getting back with the wife well not really getting back with her but like I said it was just like a thought of do I want to give my daughter quote unquote the family she deserves and it's just like no because you have a great thing with Aisha that y'all are figuring out so why would you mess it up to go back with this when you just decided to leave her leave your ex-wife where she is and you know move on with your life like your baby daughter she loves Aisha that could be her new mama or said mama, at least because you know the mama is still in the picture and we respect uh by your parents. So anyway, um, but at the end of the show, is um they had the guys like holding up signs so she would read it and it says move in with us, Miss Mac. And so yeah, that's how it ends. She's like, he want me to do what? He wants you to move in, baby. It is time for you to move in and y'all get together. Um, but yeah, that's all I got. It's a really great book. Please go pick it up. I hope I did it some justice in talking about it. I kind of feel like I didn't, but I'm going to let those insecurities just flow right over my head. Um, but yes, please go pick it up. It is by, and I never said that in the beginning. Wow, Erica. A.H. Cunningham. And the book is called Ply Wicked Moves Book One. And that's, you know, P-L-I-E with an um, shit, an accent on top. I don't know why that escaped my mind. <sighs> Bye. <laughs>